So um, welcome everyone to today's webinar, which is about opportunities for innovation, specifically in freight uh, within the city of Detroit. And this is part of the Sustainable Cities Challenge. Um, thank you for spending uh, the next hour with us. We're really excited to talk you through some, um, some key insights from our side, and then also open it up for some questions towards the back end. So we are um, recording today's session. And this recording will be available uh, afterwards uh, via the via the website. Um, so we'll post that together with the slides and any other resources um, afterwards. Now, as I said, we we will have a Q and A session at the end of this webinar. Um, so please do share your questions as we go using the chat function online um, and we'll make sure that we're logging those and we'll we'll come back to them and, and, and respond to them once the presentation itself is complete. Um, please mute your microphone when you're not speaking. I think uh, we will need to uh, give you permission to speak um, during the Q&A session, but once you have been given permission, please do, if you're not speaking, keep yourself muted so that <clears throat> we don't have any feedback in the background. So um, again, a big welcome. My name is Janet Southern McCormick. I'm a senior program manager with ChallengeWorks, which is a, a, a key delivery partner um, with the Sustainable Cities Challenge. And I'm delighted to have with me um, my co-speaker, my co-facilitator, Vince Keenan from the city of Detroit. Um, he's head of the, he's part of um, he's head of innovation and engagement of the Office of Mobility Innovation. And and I think we're going to have a really good next hour going through some some interesting content. So I'm going to kick us off today with um, a bit of insight on into the Sustainable Cities Challenge Detroit itself. And then I'll hand over to Vince, who'll take us through um, specific opportunities for innovation um, within the clean freight space. And then we'll wrap up with that Q&A. So let's get started. What is the Sustainable Cities Challenge? Well, um, this challenge really aims to pull together and harness the power, the creativity, and the innovation um, across across the world, really, to be able to create safe, equitable, and sustainable mobility solutions for all. So this is a um, an overarching challenge that cons is consisting of three specific city challenges, which are all open for entry at the moment and will be closing in September of this year. So um, we are running a challenge in Venice which is all about embracing sustainable mobility, specifically micromobility, zero and low carbon options. In Varanasi, we're looking at innovating crowd flow, um, looking at overcrowding and supercrowding in that ancient city. Um, but today we're here to talk about Detroit. And in Detroit, we're talking about transforming freight and how we can look to support solutions that reduce fossil fuel use and cut costs for freight operations, specifically in the Eastern market area of Detroit. So what I'll do now is show you a short video um, on, on the Detroit challenge, and I hope you enjoy it. Movement is at the heart of every city. When we can move more freely, we can achieve more. But how can we continue to make our cities smarter? More responsive? More resilient? How can we build the cities of tomorrow today? The Sustainable Cities Challenge is seeking innovators from around the world to bring low carbon solutions for the movement of goods in and out of Detroit's thriving Eastern market. With up to 3 million in funding available, we are seeking clean freight solutions that will benefit Detroit and also cities all over the world. So as the needs of people evolve, cities can continue to grow with them. Together, we can work to build a more sustainable future and help to transform the lives of millions of people. Join us, the Sustainable Cities Challenge. Great, so hopefully you all enjoyed that. Um, so let's just jump into a little bit more of the detail. So I want to talk 
through the challenge statement for the Detroit uh, challenge today. And uh, just for some context, a challenge statement is a call to action for you, for innovators. And it really maps out and outlines the, the aims of the challenge, what we're hoping to achieve through it. And it specifies the desired outcomes. But importantly, it does this without predetermining what the solutions could be. It keeps the field of in innovation and the scope of innovation open and broad. So for Detroit, and I am going to read this specifically off the slide because the wording is quite particular here. The challenge statement is to demonstrate solutions that reduce fossil fuel use and cut costs of freight operations in Eastern market. And solutions should be addressing one or more of the following things. It should They should either reduce idling time, reduce partial loads and empty miles, reduce reliance on fossil fuel for cold chain logistics and freight management, and or reduce the implementation costs and barriers to adopting clean freight technologies. So there's a lot in that. Um, but again, solutions should be addressing one or more of them. So if you're only looking at one of those bullets, fine. If you're able to cover off more than one with your solution, even better. So let's move on to the judging criteria. So we've got um, six key judging criteria that will be used to assess the solutions that are submitted to the challenge. Um, you can see across the top here, there are they are reduction of fossil fuel use, innovation in Eastern markets specifically, the adoption potential by businesses, technology maturity, potential to scale, and, and very importantly, capability to deliver. So I'll go through these very briefly. Um, and then and then if there are any questions on this, please feel free to add them to the chat and we can pick them up afterwards. So reduction of fossil fuel does what it says on the tin. Um, it's about evaluating solutions um, that can, uh, you know, impact the decrease in fossil fuel use. Um, in innovation, it's about the degree of improvement and novelty that are offered by the proposed solutions in comparison to what is already being offered within Eastern market. In terms of adoption potential by businesses, this is really looking at um, the understanding of user circumstances, of needs and of expectations from within um, the Eastern market context. Technology maturity, we're looking for the state of planning, development and testing at each stage of the solution um, and how it really includes the co-design with specific users, off-site testing and on-site demonstration, again, within Eastern market. Looking at potential to scale, this is around how your solution can achieve long-term market viability, not only within Eastern market, but beyond. And finally, capability to deliver, which is about having the skills and partnerships um, necessary to deliver your solution and, and deliver it well. So let's move on to the structure and timeline. So you can see here that we're currently open for, for entries and that the deadline is the 12th of September. Um, we'll then be moving through into a, um, a series of different stages. And this breaks down into the following on this table, as you can see. We've got a semi-finalist stage, which will have up to 10 teams um, that will each receive a grant of up to $50,000 each to develop your solution and, and importantly, do some relationship building with partners on the ground in Eastern Market. The second stage is the finalist stage. That's where we'll have up to five teams who will get a further grant of $130,000 each to um, further demonstrate their solution and refine it. And then finally, the last stage is the winner stage. And that is where they will be selected in March 2026 to continue to work with the city and with TMF to um, implement their solution and, and hopefully scale that wide more widely within eastern market and and beyond and that's where you'll have up to 1.5 million dollars shared um, amongst those winners so it's really important that the funding that's being provided at every stage is used to develop test demonstrate and implement your solution for detroit's eastern market in detroit's eastern market and one last point here to say is that if you are selected as a semi-finalist, um, you will need to attend an in-person Innovator Academy that will be delivered in Detroit um, from the 9th to the 12th of December this year. So let's talk a bit about the entry process. Um, 
we have an online form that people need to complete ahead of the entry deadline, which is, as I said, the 12th of September of this year. Now, we do have a downloadable PDF. I would really recommend you download that and look at it in detail. If you have specific questions, then you can reach out to us. But a note that's very important is that you must complete the entry via the online portal. Um, we won't be accepting completed PDFs via email. Um, they, they won't qualify. So you need to use the online portal. The PDF is purely to aid you in the preparation of your entry. And before you do go ahead and submit your entry, it's important that you read a number of different documents, um, the challenge terms and conditions, the privacy policy, and our entrant handbook, which includes our various criteria, both eligibility and judging, as well as the challenge statement and lots of other useful information that's really going to help you frame your solution and submit the best possible entry that you can. Right, with that, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to pass over to the more interesting um, speaker today, who is Vince Keenan. So I'm going to go ahead and hand over to him. Janet, I can't possibly live up to being more interesting than you, but I will um, talk about the city of Detroit, which uh, I am quite familiar with. I'm Vince Keenan. I'm the head of innovation engagement for the mayor's office of mobility innovation. Um, and we, uh, I can, I, I, as I was watching you do that portion of the presentation, Janet, it occurred to me that um, this is actually a very similar process to the one that uh, the city of Detroit went through when we were applying for this. So I can speak uh, to anybody interested in applying that uh, the team working on this will help you through it. Uh, they are sincere when they say that they will uh, meet with you one on one and they will help uh, work through anything. So while there was a lot of information there, um, as you uh, matriculate through the system and if you if you are uh, lucky enough to be selected one on ones, uh, they will help make sure that you meet all the deadlines and uh, and, and work through the process. That being said, um, I would like to talk a little bit about some of the reasons that freight is a real focus for um, the city of Detroit. And I'm gonna do a couple of things. One, uh, talking broadly around the, um, the issues uh, that Freight essentially is a is a major contributor to uh, carbon emissions. It's a major contributor to um, particulate emissions, and uh, we have uh, a central distribution hub in the city of Detroit. Uh, people have to eat, uh, and so um, we need to move the, the the product around in order to make sure the city gets fed. We have not. Uh, as of recent, had any real new innovative thought about how to do that in a cleaner, more sustainable way. And so um, we have some information here, a little bit of background on some of the uh, U.S. Uh, impact that freight that, that freight has in the United States, but essentially it's, it's a lot. And um, we would like to start thinking differently about the future of our, of our city. Um, and so if I could get the next slide, please. Um, we want to, to sort of frame this conversation in such a way that we're talking about uh, some of the challenges and opportunities here. As I said, city needs to eat, the food comes in through Eastern Market and it gets distributed and there are uh, not a ton of, it's, it's not a high profit industry uh, necessarily uh, to be a farmer that, distri that distributes produce in the produce market. Um, so we have very cost conscious uh, consumers. And right now there's not a sense that this is a major problem. We see this more as an opportunity. In the city of Detroit, um, we are looking uh, to, we don't have a legacy system that necessarily has to be replaced. We do have a uh, multiple freight operators that are operating every day um, and there is no central control. So there are certain types of solutions um, that it, we would love to be able to uh, say, okay, everyone has to do it this way. Um, but this is one where we know uh, we can't disrupt the we can't disrupt the operations that are happening today. But we ha and we also have to sort of inspire participation from the ground up. Um, one of the reasons that we think that this is something we hope you consider participating in is that the city of Detroit has one of the most trafficked uh, freight borders in the world between the US and Canada. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but we see a great deal of scalability. And in fact, once the uh, Toyota Mobility Foundation had come in uh, and announced that Detroit had won, 
the state of Michigan in which the city of Detroit resides uh, stepped up and started to put, pull together some match dollars uh, and in fact is looking at more broadly a clean freight solution uh, program uh, to be developed out of this. And our hope is, is that the Sustainable Cities Challenge will begin to show the way forward uh, to a, a, a broader uh, state-funded uh, conversation, not part of the Sustainable Cities Challenge, but certainly um, we see the Sustainable Cities Challenge and the folks that are going through this process as being um, right in the beginning of an important conversation. Next slide, please. Uh, if you're not familiar with Detroit, we threw uh, together a, a fun slide here. It is the home of the domestic uh, auto industry. Uh, there is uh, no small amount of irony in, the, in that it is the Toyota Mobility Foundation that has uh, become a partner with us on this. Um, they are not based in Detroit. Uh, however, uh, we do a lot and share a lot of common interest in terms of uh, the creation of cars and the impact that they have on the environment. And so um, we're grateful for TMF for uh, working with the city of Detroit on this critical issue. Um, you may be familiar with uh, Detroit as the Motor City. You may also be familiar with uh, one of Detroit's other major exports, which is uh, music. Um, we, have, we are the home to many, many, many famous uh, Motown stars. Uh, and non-Motown stars, including uh, Stevie Wonder and Eminem, Madonna, um, and Diana Ross, but a lot of folks have come through uh, Detroit's uh, music scene. And we are situated, there's a little map there that we put there if you're not familiar with the, the hand at the top of the, uh, of the United States, uh, situated in the middle of the Great Lakes. Uh, the city of Detroit is right there. Uh, in the bottom of the thumb, one of the few places in the uh, in the United States, uh, in the continental United States that is north of Canada, that's Canada below us there. Um, so we like to that that and that is the border that we'll talk about in a little bit. But we also have a huge uh, shipping uh, system that works through all of the Great Lakes. Next slide, please. Easter Market uh, is uh, very good in a city that has had a pretty substantial turnaround in the last uh, 15 years. Um, we, we went through one of the most significant uh, bankruptcies uh, in the US history, um, uh, but this was about 15 years ago and really put us on a path towards growth uh, going forward. We are looking to stimulate our economy. We're looking to uh, build jobs for residents. Um, and uh, one of the areas that we see a huge uh, amount of potential is in in around the Eastern market. Um, and so to that end, there is a plan, there are several plans that have been done um, that you can reference if you'd like to, uh, including the city's plan done in conjunction with Eastern market and surrounding communities, um, the Eastern market framework that can be found on the city's website. Um, there's a major freeway that is going to be uh, reconfigured, impacting trucking routes and all sorts of freight um, in uh, I-375, Interstate 375 uh, is coming to grade. And then Eastern Market has done its own uh, strategy that did inform the city's framework um, about moving the food innovation zone forward, which is an expansion to the east that will essentially bring more trucks and more people into the same a very successful neighborhood that's been operating for about a, the, the, the market itself has been operating for over 100 years. So the general idea is that now is the time for us to really think about how to do this in a better way as those people are impacted. And so next slide. This is just a quick diagram, um, sort of thinking through uh, the kind of market that is in Eastern Market. So Eastern Market has many, it, it's it's a neighborhood, the, but it's but it also, um, the small M market, there's multiple markets that happen during the week. This is a snapshot of the daily wholesale produce market. Um, so this is a cold chain supply market. And you can see coming off of the I-75 interstate, we just have some you know, very quick diagram just to show that those are class eight vehicles coming into shed seven on the one side. They meet uh, on the other side of the shed with um, smaller to mid-scale vehicles that are then redistributing um, what, what is coming from the growers in the produce market uh, throughout the city all the restaurants, uh, hospitals, uh, 
any place that is going to be using that produce is coming in through the one side. So you can see from our perspective, we're looking at kind of a whole a whole system. We'd like to we'd, we'd like to get a better understanding of it. More data is definitely needed. Um, this particular market, the wholesale produce market, operates every day from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Um, there are about 36 vendor farms. They participate seasonally, so there'll be peak times where there's a lot more stuff in Shed 7 than there is in the middle of uh, winter. Um, but on average, uh, you'll have about 16 class eight vehicles come in through the one side and uh, about 35 box trucks and some other smaller vehicles come out of the other side. Um, the similar operation is happening at, uh, at Shed 3 on a slightly smaller scale. And then you'll have different markets. On Saturday, you'll have a, a, a large public facing market that is less towards the retail um, where, uh, where you'll, you'll have a, hundreds, um, tens of uh, uh, thousands of people will come in um, and that and they'll be individually coming in to buy from growers on the Saturday market. Sunday markets uh, have different goods that are brought in. Tuesday markets are different. So this same uh, open air market space is used around the week to vend different things. Uh, all of the providers, there is no, at this point, uh, central ground traffic control. So um, while this that is something that we hope uh, we will all collectively get a better handle on going forward, uh, through the challenge and, and, and other clean freight uh, initiatives on the city side and on the state side, the reality is, is that this is what it is today. And this is a snapshot for you to sort of take in and, and, and see, make some assumptions around as you put together your proposals. Next slide, please. So this is a, a slide that, that shows, again, just kind of freight distribution associated with the market. These, these particular lines show the, the impact of freight and its concentration right in the middle, as you can see, the, those, the red area there is um, the frequency of the vehicles coming in to and, and around the market. The city of Detroit is roughly uh, housed in the north uh, portion, uh, north of the river here. So Windsor there is that portion of Canada uh, that we talked about before. Um, but everything above the river is the city of Detroit in this diagram. And you can see how Eastern Market situated centrally um, and is a, is a main distribution hub. Uh, next slide. So talking a little bit about the opportunity to scale and why you might wanna be part of the conversation in Detroit. There's a couple things um, that Detroit has going for it. Uh, I would make the argument that um, you know, one of the things that we don't really think about in Detroit, but is absolutely the case, is that there's a ton of access um, to, uh, to the thought leadership of the automotive, US domestic automotive industry. Um, it's just part of the, uh, of the place. Um, and so uh, solutions that, that have an impact there that might be of interest are, are easy to demonstrate and see. Um, there's all kinds of mobility meetups and conversations and, 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 and an innovation ecosystem um, that is growing and being written up all over the country uh, along with billion dollar investments on innovation uh, and technology spaces coming together to help promote the transition of the auto industry to the mobility industry. Physically, though, I will also mention freight as a particular area of interest because we do have, this is the Ambassador Bridge that connects them. This is a view facing south, actually, from Detroit to uh, Canada. And this is one of the, this is the most trafficked um, freight uh, land bridge between Canada and the United States. And uh, if we talk, there's four lanes uh, of the Ambassador Bridge right now. Uh, and that has been there for a hundred years, if you, for, uh, for almost a hundred years, I think. And then if you go to the next slide, um, you will see um, an expansion of this border crossing. So we're gonna be adding six new lanes on the Gordie Howe Bridge, just down the road, expanding this already um, very uh, heavily trafficked freight corridor between these two uh, very close uh, trading partner countries. Uh, and with it, with at this point, um, no specific uh, target goals for uh, for freight or clean freight initiatives, um, but a clear uh, demand for one and a clear opportunity for one. So there is a sense that we need 
as we're looking at the expansion of this uh, of this trade, um, we need to be thinking about what we need to be doing in terms of clean freight. That's part of the reason that we're looking at um, trying to target some initiatives uh, that can lead us to the path to the future uh, in Eastern market. Next slide. So uh, I, I will just close with this and say, um, we are genuinely interested in just about any ideas that are out there that the case can be made that will be reducing uh, diesel runtime and improving air quality, reducing carbon emissions uh, in and around the market. Um, so people have said, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? To be quite honest, we've put some examples of some of the things that people have, have brought up. Uh, on on the the slide here, but this is by no means uh, what we are limited to. But certainly, uh, refrigeration heat reclaim, uh, containment innovations, predictive shippings, micro freight solutions, drone freights, uh, aerial freight, um, uh, shed inventory management, cold chain tracking, digital freight. The answer is yes, and we have not actually in any of our one on one uh, conversations at this point come up with we we've offered advice as to where. Uh, a proposal might be more, um, but we're very excited about what we've been hearing back. So if you um, see something in here on this list that seems like something you might propose, great. If you see something in here that's totally unique, um, great as well. Um, this is not an exhaustive list and we're looking for new and innovative ideas. And um, let me see, I think that may be the last slide before we go to some Q&A. So Janet, I'm gonna hand it back yeah. to you. Brilliant. Thanks, Vince. Um, that was that was great. Um, and hopefully for everyone on the line, that gave uh, me a really good sense of the context of Detroit um, and some of the key variables and factors that you'll need to consider as part of the development of your solution. Um, I've already seen that we've got a few questions that have come through. Um, so feel free to, to keep those coming. Um, we'll kick off with the first one, which is um, from an anonymous attendee. And the question is, can you share existing data such as current idle times, fossil fuel rates at Eastern Market, et cetera? And this is a, a good question, isn't it, Vince? It's it, it's a clear indicator of the, probably the most relevant question um, as to where we're at right now. What what we're doing is we're compiling the publicly available data. Um, we're also looking at uh, um, some data collection solutions to help refine um, the project to some the, the 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 project proposals over the course of the the time that that uh, you've applied and you've made it to semifinalist stage and finalist stage. Uh, that being said. Um, we don't have uh, more than the publicly available data right now to give you. Um, you have some of the information that we talked about in terms of the, the, the produce market, for example. But at, at this stage, it's fair for an applicant to make uh, an assumption or a couple of assumptions based on some very basic ideas that the, the mm -hmm. Eastern market operates, um, again, a series of fully independent um freight operators, some of them small scale, one and two trucks, mom and pop shops, some of them midsize, 10 and 20, and some of them larger where there's 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 100 in the fleet. In the early going um, of this challenge uh, and part of what we're trying to be respectful of in terms of working with the market, and again, growers that are dealing with some of these razor thin margins and aren't necessarily looking for, um, uh, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations with uh, every innovator to refine a, refine a new idea. They're trying to get their food to market before it, it spoils, uh, At the make sure everything's at the right temperature, make sure that the product that people want is there. So what we're doing in an early stage is saying, make reasonable assumptions uh, about how your project might fit into uh, a system. You can pick what the right size uh, partner you might want is, and then over time, what we'll do is we'll begin a matchmaking process and and pair uh, solutions that may be attractive to partners. Uh, as Janet mentioned before, in the judging system, um, we'll 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 start pairing you up uh, more specifically. So we do expect a degree of um, uncertainty in the initial round of of assumptions, uh, but we expect to have more data for you over time to refine uh, the execution. Thanks, Vince. And, and for the anonymous attendee, I hope that 
that um, answers your question. Um, feel free to to throw in a follow up if that's if if you need to. I know Dina is trying to encapsulate um, Vince's uh, response uh, in, in kind of written form. So that will be helpful for everyone to refer back to. Um, the next question is from um, uh, Nora Wati and um, they're asking, can you explain more detail about insurance that's mentioned in the terms and conditions? So um, it would be great to get a little bit more um, definition on, on, on what particularly you're talking about in terms of any indemnity insurance or, or, or the specific thing that you're asking about. But I will say, regardless, I'm not sure Vince and I are probably the right people to answer that particular question. We might have to defer that one to our colleagues at um, Toyota Mobility Foundation. But if you can just um, refine your question a little bit further with a bit more detail, we can pass that along to our colleagues at TMF and make sure that that is shared back with you. So let's move on to the other questions here. Robert has um, thrown in a couple here, which are really good ones. Um, the first one is, are the operators with Eastern Market facing policy or legislative pressure to decarbonize? For example, low emission zones, zero emission vehicle mandates, et cetera. Um, so yeah, Vince, that's, that's another one for you. Yes. So the answer to the question, Robert, is no, not at the moment. However, um, the conversation has started and um, what the, the city hopes to do um, with this essential service uh, in, the, in the food that's being distributed through the market is to work in partnership with the uh, with the providers so that we can grow a solution that they're prepared for um, ultimately enshrining it in um, some kind of legislation, but one that is not uh, alarming to anyone. And in particular, where we see the opportunity there is in the expansion of the market. Um, as the businesses are growing their operation, um, we like we we like the fact that this challenge gives us an opportunity to sort of bring newer technologies in to bear um, on on those expansion opportunities. And again, um, I wouldn't say uh, it's impossible. I think that the um, the 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 pressure to decarbonize is there, um, but it's also um, something that our hope is is that we're creating uh, more of a cooperative environment at this stage in the city of Detroit with these with these providers. Um, and then I, can, I guess I can take the follow on question there about whether the freight operations are owned and run by Eastern market businesses. So in many cases, yes. Um, and that leads to some of the um, uh, you know issues relating to uh, empty mile. You own a truck, you're going to put in what you've produced uh, and take it to market. And there's no real way uh, to cater, uh, to, to trim down the size of uh, the vehicle if you only have one um, that's taking that's taking everything to market. And, uh, but there are also uh, providers in the market that we're in conversation with as well, such as uh, Penske is um, one of the, the major uh, uh, renting uh, and leasing uh, outfits that has um, that has a number of uh, customers in the market that that does have some scalability capacity. So it's a mix of of, of just about everything uh, it, that you will find something uh, if you if you need a, a a partner that is that is leasing. If you need a partner that owns, um, it's there right now. Uh, and I, I don't want to say it's it's. Uh, disorganized it's no one has ever even suggested it should be organized uh, and that's and that's where we're at at this stage brilliant thanks vincent and robert hopefully that um responds to your uh, re uh, responds to your questions and provides you the answers that you need um so david uh, has another question here so for a potentially autonomous solution is there a contact for obtaining information on where an av could operate or be tested or demonstrated so um yes actually the office of mobility innovation my office in the city of detroit is rolling out two uh, autonomous uh, pilots this summer uh, and we have had uh, several of them 
uh, in the past. Again, this, this has to do with sort of proximity to the auto industry. Um, none as uh, extensive as uh, some of the things you may have read about in San Francisco with the cruise deployment uh, or, or Waymo deployments in, um, in Phoenix. Um, but we're, we have been looking at the uh, robo-taxi space. Um, we are more interested, I think, in, um, in the, the freight space. So here we don't have anything yet, but we would be interested. And we've had a couple of, uh, of efforts that haven't come to fruition, but, but ha are still on the drawing board. Um, and then we do have um, in uh, the, the two projects that, that we have uh, announced, one is underway right now, and the other will be um, coming in, uh, in mid-August. They are um, pedestrian transit solutions, or I'm sorry, they're, uh, they're, they're transit solutions for people. They're moving people around and not freight. Um, but that being said, they, they show the path to um, the uh, availability of, uh, of ordinances and regulations around uh, autonomy in these kind of solutions. So we could, we could map that all out for you. We've done it. And we, it wouldn't be the first time for the city of Detroit. Brilliant. Thanks, Vince. That was that was really clear. Um, David also asked, could you speak to the level of EV charging infrastructure currently in place in Eastern markets? So, yes, I, I can. Um, the market has uh, we, we have looked at um, th there are a number of EV chargers in in, in DC fast chargers in the market right now. Um, but for commercial grade vehicles, um, there, there are a number of potential upgrades that we would be looking for. Um, and this is something that is, is kind of part of our, our broader, uh, when we talk about uh, what we'd like to see, uh, Sustainable Cities Challenge uh, innovations point the way towards. We, we, we've talked about them as being sort of rungs on a ladder. Like we know where we're, we're trying to get to, they, they point in the right direction. Um, but uh, we see opportunity and, and are working with different agencies to try and provide some hydrogen infrastructure in the market to provide um, a, a sort of larger DC fast charging. One of the things for us uh, that, that is driving this is that um, we uh, live in cold weather. I didn't put that on the um, things about Detroit thing, but, but uh, we're, we, we have some pretty cold winters um, and um, there, there's a lot of concern that um, when you talk about uh, class eight vehicle running off of battery electric, um, even in the best conditions, you're not getting a ton of mileage off of it, but we are not in the best conditions by any stretch. So um, part of what we hope to be able to do here is uh, make the case for the right kind of blended uh, longer term infrastructure that we need uh, EV, hydrogen, uh, you name it. Um, City of Detroit has one of the first, uh, has the first um, electric induction uh, roadways in um, in North America. Um, it's not in the Eastern market, but we're, we're in that space where we're trying to figure out what the right kind of equipment is to put in the ground. Um, so while it wouldn't necessarily be available for a proposed solution, um, given the time that it takes to do it and the funding that has to come along with it, um, we are not opposed to solutions that might suggest that these kinds of infrastructure improvements are the way to go. And in fact, we kind of like that idea. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, Vince. Those are really two really good questions, David. Thanks for those. Um, moving on to Anne, who asks, should we consider the potential new, new EV fleet infrastructure in our proposals? Um, I think, so one of the things in, in the challenge, if you, if you look at it, is uh, uh, we left room open for some financial innovation um, as well. Fleet conversion to uh, EV infrastructure, um, again, given the cold weather issues, it's a tough sell um, here in Detroit right now. And there are some folks that are prepared to, to go ahead and start doing it. Um, but it's um, it's it's really um, it, it, I, I would I would say uh, consider them in the proposal thing as, as something that may be part of a blended set of solutions, alternative fuels in the future. Um, 
but if it's a necessary, if fleet conversion is a necessary component for your submission for the 2024, 20, 25 sustainable cities challenge, I would say, um, cater the, the submission to sort of give us a sense of how the proposal and the innovation will get us there rather than, um, then, then to say our innovation will be great once everyone converts to uh, an EV fleet. Yeah, I, I think um, I think that's yeah. I, I guess the only thing I'd add is just that think about your in your proposal. Think about the time frame of your solution and the time frame that the challenge offers. And um, as Vince was saying, you know, how is this contributing to the journey to getting to that ultimate clean clean landscape? Um, wonderful. So let's see here where we are. Um, I think that's, oh, David's question we've already answered there. Um, do we have any others on the line? We do have a little bit more time left over in case people have additional questions. I've had some good crackers of questions come through. So thank you for the ones that we've received so far. David coming in strong with another one. So from one of the previous slides, it didn't look like there was a lot of food going between the US and Canada. Is that the case? So I don't have the particular stats about uh, all the freight breakdown uh, between what is being traded between uh, on that border. Um, I do know that there is a decent amount of produce that that is traded. There's a ton of, um, there. Uh, I know this from talking and working with the Eastern market folks. There's a ton of tomatoes that actually come in um, from uh, Canada into the market. Um, so there, there is, uh, there is produce, there is cold chain um, in some of the freight that you saw pictures of. But again, just to, just to give it context, we see this uh, challenge as sort of a lightning rod for uh, a bunch of uh, different ideas that have been circulating on the city level and on the state level. Um, and it has really given us an opportunity to, to um, uh, pick a place where we're gonna, where we're gonna really start the conversation and mm -hmm. some of the broader context of uh, the freight operations speaks more to the scalability. Like, why would you wanna, why would you wanna be involved here? Because we, the city of Detroit, um, the state of Michigan has already come in with an additional 400,000 on top of the, uh, the dollars that, um, um, that, that, that TMF has put, put forward. I mean, essentially we're there, we want to have the clean freight conversation and you would be in on the ground floor of that conversation, uh, with, uh, ties to, uh, the intention of doing more, uh, in the future. Brilliant. Okay, let's see. Any others that have come through? Nope, I think. Oh, Nora, um, Noriawati has raised their hand. So why don't I go ahead and let you speak? So please go ahead. You should be able to speak now. If you unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, no, sorry, I forgot to lower my hands. Actually, you have answered my question. Thank you very oh, much. Okay, no problem, no problem. Brilliant. So let's just see if there are any other questions on the line here. Um, and David's got one last one. So are there any plans in Detroit or in Eastern Market for installing V2X infrastructure? So uh, the answer to that is... Um, it is yes. Um, the only reason I hesitate on that is because um, the 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 question of what V to X infrastructure um, it is still up in the air, and it really does end up being kind of a uh, if you're in the V to X space, which I'm assuming if you're asking the question, you you might be. Um, when we started looking at this challenge there are certain things that 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 really jumped jumped out at us um and you know the potential efficiencies um even talking with teamsters the, the teamsters union um and, and and other truck drivers um you know there there's a huge opportunity here um to help uh guide more efficient routes and 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 um you know the, the sort of v to x conversation there's there's a million ways that this could really be helpful. Um, in fact, 
our some of our data collection um, uh, strategy working uh, between now and when the Innovator Academy will happen um, involves um, you know, cap, working with providers in order to get more of the telematics data that's already being generated, but is sort of siloed. And so um, there is an intention, yes, David, to try and, um, and, and move in this direction. But we also have to be realistic about the fact that um, the intention doesn't lead us to infrastructure installations um, yet. Um, we have some myovision cameras that we're putting through, some smart infrastructure that we're putting through, um, but we would love to have uh, V to X technology that would, um, you know, prevent collisions and, um, uh, you know, immediately identify uh, duplicative routes um, and uh, route around uh, congestion uh, or incorporate micro, uh, micro mobility solutions. Um, the will is there, but the means is not there yet. So um, we're having those conversations. We'd love to have you uh, push them along. Brilliant. Um, looking at our time, we've got about 10, just over 10 minutes left. Do we have any other questions through from those on the line still? We're checking here. Um, if not, I guess I will just say that um, just as a follow up to this webinar, um, if you do have, this is not your last opportunity to ask questions by any means. So if you do have some questions that, that come up for you um, after this webinar, please do feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're offering a range of support to help you as, as you do prepare your entry. So I would recommend you visit our website. Uh, you can sign up for another webinar or probably um, given that you've been part of this, it might make sense for you to book a one-to-one -one session with uh, members of our team. So you can do that via our website. Um, I would also recommend if you haven't already looking at that entrant handbook, there's a ton of really rich information in there that should help you as you um, as you work through your, um, your entry. One kind but quite firm request is please do not reach out to the city of Detroit or to Eastern Market directly at this stage. They they will not be able to respond to you. Um, for any specific questions, please reach out to us. Um, you can email us at info at sustainablecitieschallenge.org. Um, or as I say, you can contact us via the website and uh, we're happy to to help work through um, any questions or, or clarifications that you that you may have. Um, I think Dina has continued to add um, some of that information, including the link for the one-to-one -one session bookings. So please feel free to 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 click on that and and uh, find a slot that works for you. And I think last call for questions, but I think where we've come to a close, very very um, time efficient with just over ten minutes to go. So um, if we don't have anything else, I'm going to propose we we go ahead and and close. Um, thank you again for taking the time to join us today um, and to, to hear more from specifically Vince on the nuance um, and the, the detail and, and kind of very unique features of Detroit's Eastern Market, um, the factors and variables that you'll need to take into consideration as you develop your solution and as you specifically prepare your entry at this stage of the challenge process. Um, thanks again, Vince, for sharing for sharing your time and your brain with us. And um, again, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to help. Thank you so much. We'll be following up with um, a post webinar web a webinar email. You'll be able to get the link to the recording, and we will follow up on that outstanding question in relation to insurance. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful day.